welcome back to Rating the List, where we review, discuss, and reimagine popular movie lists objectively. We're your hosts, I'm Jerry. And I'm Brad. And on this episode, we'll be exploring number 46 from Sports Illustrated's The Top 50 Sports Movies of All Time. All right. And number 46 is Any Given Sunday, released in 1999, directed by Oliver Stone, starring Al Pacino, Dennis Quaid, Cameron Diaz, and Jamie Foxx. This is a story following the fictional Miami Sharks, a once great football franchise struggling to make the playoffs. Through infighting between the front office, coaching staff, and players, the team manages to reach the championship. Okay, I really like this movie. Yeah, this is one where we had a pretty big delta between scores. I think this movie's okay. Mm-hmm. I think there's some a couple of really good performances mm-hmm. in this movie. Mm-hmm. The one that surprises me the most is Cameron Diaz. For sure. I think this is probably her best ever performance. Mm-hmm. She plays the general manager of the team. Um, her father was the owner who has passed away. So I think, I guess technically her mom is the owner, but she kind of runs the show. And she's the kind of... You know, it's it's a stereotype, but it's also kind of true is when you have a, a woman who is an executive in a very male-dominated industry, they tend to be pretty hard-assed and tough as nails, and she really portrays that. Mm-hmm. She does it really well. She holds her own in all the scenes she's got with Al Pacino. Um, she has a, a scene towards the end with... Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charlton Heston, mm, who has mm-hmm. a small role in this as the uh, commissioner of the league, which is really great. Um, she has some run-ins with uh, the the uh, the guy who plays the mayor of Miami. Mm-hmm. It's a really really good performance. Um, everyone's really good in this. Al Pacino is probably like, I mean, if you're gonna ever cast someone as a football coach, why not pick the guy who's you know known for extreme over-the-top acting like a lot of coaches tend to do he's really great uh, i would love to have him like at work every morning just give you a just give me a little, little motivational speech a little locker room motivational speech jerry you gotta take that inch <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that would be great i think i'd get a lot done you gotta fight for that inch <laughs> Um, yeah, I agree. I loved Cameron Diaz's uh, performance. She was good. She, yeah, she had to be a hard ass or nobody would take her seriously, um, which they still did not take her seriously for the most part. Yeah, and I think that's a that, that's multiple things, right? It, again, it's the female and a mm-hmm. male-dominated thing. Plus, she's also younger than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Even though she's highly educated, um, she's married. It's mm-hmm. like she can be taken seriously. She's a mature woman. It's a you know, who has good ideas. She's smart. She's sharp. Yeah. You know, she yeah. she should be taken seriously in any room these these guys are in. So it's, for sure. Um. Yeah. Jamie Foxx's performance was really really good. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. This was kind of when he came out, like yeah. kind of up and coming. Yeah. He had been on in Living Color previous to that. Yes. This was kind of his first. I think this might be like among his first movie roles. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Um, and he he plays a character named Willie Beeman. He is the third string quarterback on the team. Mm-hmm. In the first game action that we see, Dennis uh, Quaid, who is the aging star quarterback, he's been in the league for a long time, he's 38, so towards the end of his career, he gets hurt. Mm-hmm. On the very next play, the backup quarterback gets hurt, and they've got to bring in... Jamie Foxx's character, who's the third string. Yep, yep. Um, and then ultimately, you know, he's a, he's an extremely talented player, and he s- starts to, you know, the team starts to win under, you know, his leadership. At the same time, Dennis Quaid is trying to come back. So you've got the push and pull of the old... Yeah, know, the, they, there's definitely a, a struggle of old school football, new school football. And I think it's kind of still happening today in real life. I mean, the, the, the push pull, like in that, especially that position, there's always, there's always, you know, some young gun Mm -hmm. trying to out, you know, outperform some older guy and kind of 
push him at least out of the team so he gets his shot. I mean, that's just that's it's in it's just inherent in uh, in most sports. Well, and I also think that they really did a good job with showcasing the way football is today. You know, like it's not just about you know. There's a big poignant conversation between Al Pacino and Jamie Foxx. And they're really talking about how the game has changed to today. A lot of times now, it's not just about playing football. It's about making sure you're taken care of and your family's taken care of. They kind of know now and understand the ramifications for having a long football career could be, you know, that might be it, mm -hmm. you know, because of it's such a brutal sport that that you got to make sure that you're taken care of um, mm -hmm. within the NFL. And I think that in Dennis Quaid, as he, in his career, it was more about football. Like you want to play, you want to do it. You want that the recognition team. He, he's for the like, team. Yeah, he's always talking about the team and Jamie Foxx is always talking about Willie Beeman. Right. He's talking about Willie, not that it's right or wrong, but he's like, look, I got to make sure that I'm, you know, out there, I'm playing mm -hmm. so that I can make money to support myself and my family, yep. you know? And I think that's, that's really how the NFL is now yep. is that it's really about, I got to take care of myself and my family. They're a little bit smarter about it. And, um, it, it makes football look completely different. Yeah, when I was in college, the, the one of the finance professors I had was a, cons a consultant for the Oakland Raiders. Mm. And he would talk to the young incoming guys about what to do with their money because the the life expectancy, or, you know, the career expectancy of an NFL player is like 2.1 years. So... You know, you could be in and out of the game before you're 25 years old. Yeah. So you've got a whole lot of time. You know, if you didn't, you know, do, you know, if you weren't really set up well in college or whatever to do something post football, you've got to make that money that you made in the league mm -hmm. last as long as possible. And that's kind of the, the well, thing I that he sat down and talked to him about. He actually spoke, spoke about it in one of our classes because we were talking about like, uh, future value or something and yeah. he was going into that that's cool and for dennis quaid you know his character is like i gotta keep playing until i really cannot play anymore and he's his wife which i don't know if i believe it or not she's really like pushing him to keep going even though he's hurt um i don't think a wife would do that yeah. i don't think she would push him so that he can't do anything else. I mean, this guy had severe back issues mm. and he would not, he'd be crippled. Yeah. I, Lauren Holly, I think is a good actress. Mm -hmm. I think she gives a good performance yeah. in this. I just think the way that the character's written is really inauthentic. Right, right. I don't. It's the one thing in this movie where I'm like, this strikes me as so inauthentic. But, you know, I feel like sometimes Oliver Stone kind of does that with his female characters. Yeah. He kind of makes them real, like, pushy mm -hmm. and, you know, selfish yeah. in a way. Which I don't think that women are inherently like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that's about. That's Oliver Stone thing. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. I mean, there was, there was a way, I think it would have taken a little bit more nuance, but there's a way to write this character where he wants to keep going and his wife's kind of trying to pull him back. You've got mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. We've got a life. You're 38 years old. We've got a life to live after this. Yes. And try to, you know, do it the other way where he's the one that's really pushing to get back out there and she's the one trying to keep him from doing it because I think that's far more believable. And I think, too, the, the team pushing him to go back out there is a little bit more believable yes. than her pushing him or they could have done like what they did with the the Lawrence Taylor character so Lawrence Taylor you know in a you know totally off the wall thing plays a you know a line a star linebacker weird what? It's totally <laughs> weird um but he's got to reach a certain level of tackles to get this million dollar bonus but 
he's got a he's got an injury that could potentially kill him. Yeah, he's if, had many, many, many concussions. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, he's warned by the medical staff about this, but ultimately, you know, he's again he's he's taking a sacrifice for his family to make that that money they could have done something similar with mm -hmm. Dennis Quaid's character or they could have done something like hey if you get us through this there's a coaching position yeah. waiting for you yeah some kind of, I mean there's some kind of carrot that they could have put out there to keep him on the field even if it was reluctantly where and have the wife be more believable and be like you know I don't want you to do this I think you know I think you're you're uh, putting your your our family in danger and you know that kind of thing. I, I think well, that would be a more believable way to go. So there in the story, there's also the new school, old school, um, medical department struggle where the old school uh, doctor is like, at all costs, we put him in the game, mm -hmm. right? He's like, I just want these guys to play because they want to play, they want to get their money. They want to support their family, so I'm going to make sure that they get in there. The new guy is like, hey, this guy could die. Mm -hmm. This guy had, he felt his, uh, Matthew Modine? Yeah. He felt his moral obligation to let them know their risks and give them the choice anyway. Mm -hmm. James Wood's character was like, I'm not going to give them that choice because I already know they're not going to take it. And he takes the stance that I work for the team. Yeah. So he's, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever's best for the team is, you know, their assets going out there and being on the field. Yeah. And at the, you know, towards the end of the movie, we see, you know, um, Matthew Modine given to his morale, you know, yeah. his, the, the, um. Yeah. You see his, his morality starting to bend. Already when he asks. Lawrence Taylor's character asks for a cortisone shot when he, when doesn't, he doesn't really need one. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he there's no medical reason to give him one when he gives right. it to him anyway. Exactly. So I thought that was, it was a really interesting, realistic dynamic between mm -hmm. the players, the team, and also the whole department as a whole. Yeah, there's, there's a few things that are just a little bit over the top that I don't think would happen, like that argument that happens between him and Cameron Diaz that's like in the locker room, I don't think that happens very, very often. No, no. Um, at least with, you know, GM and I, coach. I think that I there... think it happens with coach and players way more often. Well, and I think that, you know, it's... To me, there was kind of a very disillusioned line between of respecting each other, and I feel like... Al Pacino's character crossed that line. Mm -hmm. Like he felt like because he's known her all her life, he felt like he could be the father, a father figure to her and really just tell her whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he didn't, he couldn't, it, it, he crossed the line. And I think she, you know, had to over and over again, try to put him in his place. Yeah, she tried to redraw that line a lot in, yeah. in the movie, yeah. Um, one thing that I didn't like about the movie is, and I know it, it works a bit for this movie, I am not a huge Oliver Stone fan. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of his movies. There are a few exceptions, like JFK I mm -hmm. really liked, um, Platoon probably, and... But his movies are very stylized, and I, I get really, uh, his editing, it drives me nuts. It's like Baz Luhrmann, yeah, you know? I, 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 would, I, would, I would say hyper-stylized. Hyper-stylized, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a, it, there's, there are spots in this that really kind of work for that, but... Mm -hmm. Like the, the footage, the football footage, mm -hmm. when they're playing the game, it really works yeah. in that, in that yeah. sense. That you feel like you're on the field with them, yeah. which is kind of cool. And the way it's kind of shot and edited there, it really works. But for everything else, it's just kind of distracting and very, um, like, laying it on thick with yeah. the symbolism, you know? Yeah, I thought the football footage really worked because it really evoked NFL mm -hmm. films. Yes, it did. So, that, you know, you, you're kind of used to seeing football on film. Yeah. 
So seeing it on film and like in slow motion where they're like, there's a couple shots where they're really focusing in on the spiral. Mm -hmm. That's like, it's like straight out of NFL films and it looks really, really great. Um, also one thing that I was impressed with is, um, oh shoot, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, oh, Oliver Stone, um, he doesn't dumb anything down for the audience. Like, mm -hmm. you jump into this movie with, like, a, a certain knowledge of football, mm -hmm. like, you have to have. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they go heavy into downs. Like, even, like, when you're watching the movie, like, they're talking about downs. They're talking about yardage. They're talking about, so it's like you have to have some sort of, but I think even if you don't have that, you kind of can get an idea of what's right. Going I mean, I I enough. like that he doesn't assume that we don't know, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. I think that's a that's something that really good sports movies do. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of really hoping, like when we get to stuff on the side list for sports I'm not really familiar with, that that happens. And I want to see how well they do it. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. if we can sit there and we're like, okay, we don't know the sport, but, right. we, but we get what's going on right now. Like cricket. Cricket seems very complicated. Like a lot of weird rules and stuff. And I hope I can follow along. Um, and also the, the plot's a little all over. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, oh yeah, this guy, okay. You know, so that's... I have a feeling this feels like he had a much longer director's cut. Mm. And had to scale it back to, you know, to for the finished product to get in the theater. And I think there's stuff that that's... Sense. There's stuff in there that doesn't need to be in there, like... The whole side plot with um, Elizabeth Berkeley's character, I don't think really. Oh yeah, I don't really understand. I don't think what it really saying. serves anything. I mean. I mean, you know, the guy's lonely. I mean, he's in the bar by himself all the time. And it's just like, okay, yeah, he's an older dude, and you know, it's like, do we need to see him with you know a high-priced call girl that's young enough to be his daughter? I mean, what's the point? That was the other thing. Like I. Were they trying to say he was an alcoholic? I just, there was like one shot where he's in the, the bar, at the bar mm. with his, one of the coaches. And then all of a sudden he turns around and nobody's there. Like he's the last one there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are they trying to say here? Is he an alcoholic? Yeah. Like what, what? You know, like there was. Well, they they have that scene too where he's like stumbling around, where he's calling his ex-wife, trying to get his yeah. son's new number or whatever. Which is it's kind of clear his son probably doesn't want to have anything to do with that. Probably not. You it's know. like okay, but I, I again, I it doesn't really develop the character mm -hmm. in terms of advancing the plot really. Right. Right. Yeah, right. I agree. I agree that that was a little weird. Yeah. There there there's stuff in the movie that just is just kind of thrown in there and doesn't make a ton of sense to be in this particular version of the movie yeah. that they ultimately put out. Yeah, I agree. And I know that he's making a point with the violence, mm. but it was it's a very violent movie. Yeah, and some of it's like even over the top for football, like the one dude gets his eye, eyeball knocked yeah, out. It's like, have it's you ever like, seen okay. that? Have you ever like even heard of that happening? It's like, no. So um, how do we score it? All right, this is our big, I think this is our biggest delta to date on yeah. either list. Um, I gave it a 62. I had a lot of problems with the movie, and I think it's pretty average. I think it's pretty tropey. Mm. Um, Jerry gave it an 81. So she I liked, liked it. She liked it a lot more than I did, so the list <laughs> score is 71 and a half. All right. Um, let us know. Did you watch Any Given Sunday? Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, is there another football movie that you feel deserves to be on this list? Let us know. Um, if you'd like to email us directly, email us at ratingthelist at gmail.com. But that's it for now. I'm Jerry. I'm Brad. And we're Rating the List. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.